In this installment of Learn to Fly Here, we'll learn about this blue lever. You'll also get to enjoy my artwork. The top-down view of that propeller blade, I did that. It took forever. I was even able to make it move during the demonstration to show what's going on. If you want to pause the video to admire that artwork, go ahead. And if you watch this and like this series, be sure to hit the bell notification and also the subscribe button. This is a fixed pitch propeller. If the throttle goes untouched and the airspeed increases, like in a descent, the engine speed will increase. In a climb, the airspeed will decrease as well as the RPM. An airplane could have a climb prop, which is a low pitch, but gives a higher RPM, but it could also have a cruise prop, which is a higher pitch and gives better cruise performance, but lacks climb performance. There's also a ground adjustable propeller. These are normally found on light aircraft. Blade angles can be adjusted to get the best performance for the type of airplane. Eventually, the constant speed propeller was invented. A prop governor regulates the propeller speed, and these governors can be actuated electrically or by oil pressure. This one's by oil pressure. We can get the best of both worlds. We can get good climb performance and good cruise performance, all by moving a single lever inside the airplane. With this propeller, if you set 2300 RPMs, the governor will adjust the pitch to hold 2300 RPMs and will do so most of the time. We can indirectly control the pitch of the propeller with airspeed and throttle changes, but directly with the blue propeller lever. And you can see over on the right, you can see the propeller pitch changing and increasing as we pull the blue propeller lever back. Think of the prop control as a cruise control setting for the engine speed. The prop governor adjusts the angle of the blades to maintain a constant speed, hence the name. And as we pull the throttle back, that propeller is going to try to hold 2400 RPM. It's going to actually start to slow down, but to stop it from slowing down to maintain 2400 RPM, it has to decrease the pitch of the blade so there's less drag, so it can speed back up and spin faster to maintain 2400 RPM. And as the manifold pressure is reduced, you can see the blade angle in the bottom right corner decreasing. One thing to keep in mind, the propeller governor is limited by range. There's only a certain amount of degrees the propeller blade angle can be adjusted. And when those limits are reached, this constant speed prop will act like a fixed pitch propeller. The throttle is all the way at idle and watch what happens to the RPM. The blade angle cannot be reduced anymore to decrease drag to maintain that 2400 RPM. So now the prop is slowing down and acting like a fixed pitch propeller. As we add power back in, look what happens to the blade angle now. It's increasing dramatically. The engine's producing more power, which allows the blade angle to increase and still maintain 2,400 RPMs. Earlier we said the blade angles can only be adjusted a certain amount of degrees. As the airspeed is increased, the blade angle of the propeller increases also to try to create more drag to slow the propeller back down. Here, it's hit the maximum limit and watch what happens. Listen to the RPM. It started to increase. The propeller was acting like a fixed pitch propeller because it was a fixed pitch propeller in that situation. Now we're going to do a test. This takeoff will be low pitch, high RPM, which is what we get with the prop lever where it's at now. The throttle controls the power output. The prop lever controls the speed of the propeller and engine RPM. And keep in mind as we roll down the runway, the prop governor is going to try to keep the engine RPM at red line by increasing the pitch of the propeller blades as we increase our speed. So we're two stripes away from the 1,000 foot markers, so that took 600 feet to reach 60 knots. Here's the same takeoff again, but this time for demonstration, we have the propeller control pulled all the way back. The engine is producing 41 inches of manifold pressure, but you can see it's only turning 1,500 RPMs. And right now the propeller blade is at a high pitch, low RPM. The engine is producing less power at this low RPM. You can also see that by the lower fuel flow, but the propeller is also not as efficient at this low airspeed, which is why it's taking so much longer to accelerate to 60 knots, which is going to take 1,600 feet. Here we have maximum manifold pressure, which is 41 inches, and max RPM set. If this power setting, the airplane is going to go the fastest at this altitude or any other altitude. And as the airspeed stabilizes, we're going to reach an airspeed of approximately 154 to 155 knots indicated airspeed. But also look at our fuel flow. We're burning 19 gallons per hour. But in cruise, we also want efficiency. 
we can pull the propeller lever back just a couple hundred RPMs and watch the fuel flow. Now we're only burning approximately 17 and a half gallons per hour. But then watch our airspeed. As it stabilizes, we only lose about four knots of airspeed. So what we've done is increase the efficiency. We've only slowed down four knots, but we've saved a gallon and a half of fuel per hour. Remember in the beginning when we talked about a cruise prop? Now we have a cruise prop. Another thing to watch out for with a propeller control in a properly programmed airplane and flight simulator or a real aircraft is when you reduce the propeller control your manifold pressure increases. As the RPM is reduced did you see that light come on? That's the overboost light. When you hit 42 inches of manifold pressure that light comes on. The throttle wasn't touched but the RPM was reduced and the manifold pressure increased making that light go on. And normally in an airplane with a controllable pitch propeller power is reduced by starting at the throttle then setting the propeller control and then the mixture. So just go left to right when reducing power. That's how we set power, but where do we go to find where to set the power? And that's here to this page in the pilot operating handbook or airplane flight manual. This power setting would be based on where you want your fuel flow. You can see down on the bottom right, 75% power, you burn 12 gallons an hour, 65% is 10.8 and 9.2 at 55% power. Being a pilot, nobody likes to go slow, so we're going to use 75% power. There are multiple scenarios where we can get 75% power. We can go max RPM and use a lower manifold pressure, or we can use a lower RPM and a higher manifold pressure. So we would start by looking at the altitude we're going to cruise at. So in this example, let's pick 8,000 feet. We go over to the 75% power column, and let's say we want to go middle of the road. We're going to go 2,400 RPMs, then we would go down and look at the manifold pressure at the 8,000 foot level, and we would see 33.8. So we would set the power at approximately 34 inches of manifold pressure and 2,400 RPM to get 75% power, and that should give us a fuel flow of 12 gallons per hour. And a little bonus. In a single engine airplane with a retractable gear, when do you select gear up? Some people might say positive rate gear up. In this type of airplane, it is not. It's positive rate gear up and out of usable runway because if your engine quits, you need to land on the usable runway in front of the airplane. Now to reduce power after takeoff, once we're at a safe altitude, reduce the throttle first, followed by reducing the propeller RPM by pulling the prop lever back. If the airplane needs extra performance during climb, the proper procedure is prop lever forward first to increase RPM and then increase the manifold pressure with the throttle. And realistically, once you're in cruise, it's rare that you have to put the propeller control forward for any reason. The first time it would really come forward is outside the final approach fix on an instrument approach or like in this situation during normal approach and landing. When the airplane is slowed down and configured, propeller control would be moved forward to max RPM and be sure to move the control forward slowly. And what this does is gets the airplane ready to develop full power in the event of a go around. Here's one more important thing with propeller controls and manifold pressure. Previously we were in an airplane, the Turbo Aero, which obviously has a turbocharger by its namesake. So the manifold pressure is almost always going to be higher than the RPM. The normally aspirated engine like this one operates the same. Throttles reduce first, then propeller RPM. But now we have this situation, 20 inches of manifold and 2000 RPM. So we're using a low power cruise, but say we want to add power. We increase the throttle, which increases manifold pressure. And in this situation can cause excessive pressure inside the cylinders, which could lead to engine failure, which would be caused by wear and fatigue. So the fix for this, Always keep your manifold pressure lower than the number of RPMs you have. Here we have approximately 2600 RPMs, just say 26. You'd want to keep your manifold pressure below 26. You don't want your manifold pressure to go higher than that 26. And this is just a rough guide. Always follow the limitations in the pilot operating handbook. So we saw what the traditional propeller control looks like. But what about the Cirrus? It is a constant speed prop, but it does not have a propeller control. So what's up with that? You can see here inside the Cirrus, down on the bottom right, we have a power lever or a throttle and a mixture. 
no prop control. This airplane has a FADEC. It's essentially an autopilot for the engine. As we pull the throttle back, the RPM decreases and goes back to 2700 RPM. The FADEC reduces pilot workload, but also increases overall efficiency of the aircraft. The same basic components are at play as we saw in the previous aircraft, except with this airplane, all the work is done for you. And if you want more information, consult the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. It's free online on the FAA's website. Go to Section 7, Aircraft Systems, and then under that section, you'll find this section, Adjustable Pitch Propellers. There's also a section above that on Fixed Pitch Propellers. And if you want to get into more detail, you can also learn about prop governors, speeder springs, flyweights, and other components of constant speed propeller systems. And as always, thanks for watching.